Welcome back to my booth, Irfan here. Last week you saw me review the Realme X2 Pro flagship device from Realme. This week I have their mid-range model called the Realme 5 Pro. This one comes in two variants, uh, 4GB RAM and 8GB RAM. I have the 8GB variant right here with 128GB built-in memory. I will be testing all the aspects including cameras, processor, battery to give you a real-life perspective. If gadget reviews, DIY projects, and life hacks are your thing, then consider subscribing to my booth and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out on any of the action. Inside the box, we have a small cardboard case with some instruction manuals and a clear silicon cover. Then we have the phone. It comes in two colors, the sparkling blue and the crystal green, which is the one I have here. Beneath that, we have a Type-C charging cable and a 20 watts Wook super fast charging brick. The back of the phone looks absolutely stunning. It has some sort of a cut crystal design with a holographic finish. Now it might look like their sparkling blue version but believe it, it's not. It's actually sort of a dual tone with a hint of green in the top half. We have a four cameras in one corner alongside a flash and the fingerprint sensor which to let you know is super fast and I mean really fast. I wouldn't be lying if I said this is the quickest fingerprint detection I've seen so far. On the bottom we have a headphone jack, microphone, speaker and a type C port. The volume buttons are slightly clicky compared to the power button and the SIM tray has two nano SIM slots and one memory card slot. The front and the back of the phone are uh, Gorilla Glass 3 Plus. There is also face detection but just like the X2 Pro it is not based on a depth sensor so the results in dark will be good but not great. The front display has a 16 megapixels camera in a small drop notch and the screen is 6.3 inches full HD plus display with a max brightness of 450 nits which is pretty typical. The screen to body ratio is 90.6%. It is a very neat display, the colors are vivid and the blacks are very close to being 100% dark. It runs Color OS 6 based on Android Pie which runs super smooth and no hiccups so far. It supports both on-screen navigation buttons and gesture controls which I have switched on as it makes one-handed use more convenient. However, putting on the silicon case does hinder gesture controls slightly. It has difficulty registering uh, gestures unless they are done directly from the edge of the bezel. There's a smart sidebar which you can uh, get by swiping from the top right bezel to access quick shortcuts that can be customized. There's also a dedicated game space which allows games to have most of the processor's attention when you're playing and other nifty features like holding off notifications and prioritizing network allocation. Other than that, you also have Night Shield uh, to make the screen comfortable to use in dark uh, and there's also dark mode just like the X2 Pro. It works in uh, the phone UI and the third party applications. There's also split screen mode to have two applications running simultaneously. Next up is cameras and we have five of those. The four on the back are the 119 degrees uh, 8 megapixels wide angle camera on the top followed by the primary 48 megapixels camera, 2 megapixels portrait uh, camera slash depth sensor and a 2 megapixels macro camera for the close-ups. The main camera is capable of capturing some great details in good lighting, nice and uh, bright natural colors. However, if you keep the 48 megapixels mode on, every picture is going to end up being 16 MB in size which is huge. Now with the 48 megapixels mode off, it also does a pretty decent job and the image size is much more reasonable. You've also got uh, 2x, 5x uh, and all the way up to 10x of hybrid zoom. The wide angle also does a pretty good job. The details are not as good as the main camera but neither have they claimed that nor is expected of it. In low light, pictures without the nightscape mode are fine but not great. It fries up the exposure from points of light and compromises on details. However, with the nightscape on, the color tones are much more natural and the highlights and shadows have been put back into place. The same goes for the wide angle camera in dark. The portrait camera can produce uh, some good looking pictures. The blur is set uh, and I couldn't find an option to alter it. The macro is fun to play with and the results are crisp and clear with vivid details and colors. Video can be recorded at HD, Full HD and 4K at 30 and 60 FPS. Here are two samples I recorded at 1080p and 4K at 60 and 30 FPS. There is also electronic image stabilization in the front and rear cameras. In 4K it is almost absent but in 1080p it is really good. You can clearly see the difference. Finally there is also slow motion recording at 120, 240 and 960 frames per second. Uh, 960 is the same as X2 Pro, it's a split second thing so you have to really time it perfectly to get that perfect shot. 
Front camera is 16 megapixels and it's actually impressive. I found the selfie portraits to turn out slightly better than uh, with the rear camera and not just in good lighting, even in low lighting it sufficiently brightened the scene without scattering the quality. Now it's not all just cameras and pictures, the phone also carries a powerful processor, it has 8GB RAM and a Snapdragon 712 with an AI engine that can handle heavy and fast paced gaming and other apps. I got a benchmark score of almost 217,000 beating the Honor 9, Redmi Note 7 Pro and some other phones in its league. Gameplay is amazingly smooth, even at full graphics setting, PUBG ran without any frame skipping and there was no heat up at all. After playing uh, Asphalt 9 Legends for almost an hour straight, it did start to heat up but nothing significant. The battery is 4035 mAh and with a 20 watts fast charger, it charges from 0 to 100 in an hour and 20 minutes, which is significantly faster than similar phones and a full battery lasts about a day to a day and a half on average use. The audio is surprisingly loud, even with a single speaker setup, at the same time it is also clear. From the Alright, that is pretty much a wrap people. My verdict on the phone is adequate. I mean, it's no flagship killer, but on my booth it's uh, all about price to performance. And based on that, it is great. It retails for 699 dirhams for the 4GB RAM version and 890 dirhams for the 8GB version, which is roughly 190 and 240 US dollars. If you're paying that for a large crisp display, a quad camera setup, an excellent selfie camera, super fast fingerprint sensor, a powerful processor, and 80 minutes of charging time, it's not a bad deal. I'll leave the links in the description box below in case you want to check it out. That's it for now guys, if you enjoyed what you saw, hit that like button below and share the video with your friends and family. While you're there, don't forget to subscribe to my booth for more gadget reviews, DIYs and life hacks. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and Instructables, all the links are in the description box below. Click on the thumbnails to watch my other videos or check out my YouTube channel for more. As always, thanks for watching.